you guys, what's up? Today we're gonna be talking about what I would be doing if I had a $1,000 budget for wildlife photography. So a very low and attainable budget for a lot of people out there. So today we're just gonna walk through a little bit of what equipment I would pick out. However, first we're gonna be talking about something really important. We're really quick gonna discuss the quality triangle for photography. So in this quality triangle, we have three different factors. We have price, we have image capability, and we have image quality. Now these three things all correlate together because for example, let's say you wanna get a really high image quality lens. You're therefore going to have to pay a high price for it and most likely you're gonna have a lot of image capability with it. However, let's say you pay for a low image quality lens, it's probably gonna be much lower on the price end and it's probably gonna be much lower on the image quality end. Same thing goes for image capability. Let's say you wanna pay for a lot of image capability but you don't wanna pay a good price for it, you're not gonna get a good image quality out of it. But let's say you're willing to pay a high price for that image capability, you're also gonna get a lot of image quality out of it. Now, what do I mean by image quality and image capability? Price, I think is pretty evident. The more you pay for something, you know, accordingly you're going to get. But image capability is really the ability of what you're looking for and if it's able to match that capability. So what I mean by that is with wildlife photography, for example, you need a lot of focal length and a lot of reach to be able to even get a basis of how you can photograph animals, wildlife. So with most common wildlife, you need at least 300 millimeters to be able to get good shots. So these are, you know, maybe mammals, larger animals like that. However, when you're going after birds, I would argue that you need at least 400 millimeters and preferably even towards a 600 millimeter range, 500, 600. So image capability really is the definition of how much you're going to be able to um, kind of even capture in the first place for the passion that you're going after. Another great example, just not relating it to wildlife photography for a second, is astrophotography. To be able to do astrophotography, you need a very low f-stop lens and typically you want a wider lens. And so getting the image capability for that, you know, those are the two requirements to be able to have the capability to capture that image. And so therefore you're looking for a low f-stop and a wide focal length. However, if you don't wanna pay a high price for that, like I was mentioning before, you're not gonna get a lot of good image quality out of it. The lens is probably gonna be pretty, pretty blurry. The short corner sharpness is probably gonna be really bad. There might be chromatic aberration, things like that. But if you want that image capability, if, you, if you're willing to pay a lot for it, then you'll most likely get a lot of good image quality out of it. On this $1,000 budget photography end, we have our fixed price. So therefore we know that both of these are gonna be sacrificed quite a lot. But still, what would I choose amongst that? If you guys wind up liking today's video, I'm probably gonna be making maybe a $2,000 and a $5,000 budget for wildlife photography and what I would choose. So definitely make sure to comment below give a thumbs up, make sure you like it. And if you guys are really enjoying this type of content, I'll be making a $2,000 and a $5,000 budget as well in the future. So to start out with our budget, obviously the two most important things are gonna be the camera body and the lens that we're choosing. Now you could go with a, maybe a non-interchangeable lens camera, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using interchangeable lens cameras as my examples because I want something that can be upgraded over time. I want something that I can improve as I, you know, my quality increases and stuff like that. That's something that me as a beginner, if I only had a thousand dollars to invest into, I would be thinking about because I don't ever wanna necessarily be capped out of my skill because of the image quality of the camera. So I want something that I can upgrade over time and improve as I improve myself. So really when it comes down to it, we don't have a lot of budget in this. So the camera body and the camera lens, just knowing kind of a little bit of what I know myself, I knew that I was gonna be somewhere in the $400 to $500 range for both of these items because camera bodies, you can't really get too much cheaper with that without getting much, much worse quality cameras. And same thing with lenses. There's very few, if any, lenses out there for wildlife photography that are sub 500. So first, I decided on using the Micro Four Thirds lens format, the lens mount format, because first of all, the price is gonna be drastically cheaper on this. And second of all, I can get a lot more reach for the amount of money that I'm putting into. So with that being said, the camera body that I chose for myself would be the Olympus OMD E10 uh, camera out there. So it's a camera that has um, 16 megapixels. It can shoot 4K video if I'm ever trying to capture wildlife video. Really, there's not many cameras that you can get at this price range. It comes in at $450. So for the price that I'm able to pay for this and having 16 megapixels, it'll at least get me started in my journey for wildlife photography. And that right there eats up almost half my budget. So I, I really have to keep that in mind. While it'd be nice to upgrade to something like, for example, a G9 or a GX8, 
um, by Panasonic that's just a little bit too out of this budget range. So with that being said, now adding on a lens to that, again, looking into the Micro Four Thirds format because that's the type of lens that I have and I don't wanna use a lens mount to adjust it and therefore have to pay even more money. The lens that I decided to go with was gonna be the Panasonic 45 to 200 millimeter lens. Now this lens, because it's double the focal length because it's a Micro Four Thirds camera, will effectively give me about 400 millimeters of reach at the far end. So this is definitely enough to do most different types of wildlife. When it comes to birds, it's gonna be on the shorter end, but it still gives me the capability at least to be able to do it. Now the f-stop for it is 4.0 to 5.6, so it's not gonna get very low. And the image sharpness of the lens is great for the price. What we're looking for here is really at $1,000 worth for a budget of $1,000 you're looking just to get image capability in the first place. And it's gonna be really hard to touch a lot of that image quality because your price is so low. So really out of that you know, quality triangle that I was discussing earlier, we're really gonna only be able to focus on one main thing because we already know that price is set low and therefore we have to either focus on image quality or image capability. This is actually what I started my wildlife photography journey with, the 45 to 200 millimeter lens. I also started with a GH3. So the camera was a little bit different when I started my wildlife photography, but arguably the camera was much worse than this Olympus that I'm recommending. So you most definitely can get started in your wildlife photography journey doing this and using these, this camera, this lens. However, um, it's not gonna be, you know, of course, the best thing that you can get out there. Now, with being $450 and $450 for the body and the lens, we have about $100 left over. With these $100, the first thing that I would do is buy an extra battery. I think that's the most important thing that you can have as a wildlife photographer. I can't tell you how many times I would have been screwed if I only had one battery for my camera. <laughs> so even at 100%, I mean, there's plenty of days where I'm out for more than three, four hour shooting. And typically if you're taking a lot of shots within three, four hours, your camera is most likely gonna die. So I would definitely make my first investment into purchasing another battery. And personally, I like to purchase brand name batteries because they're much more um, efficient. They, you know, don't wind up dying out over time. I've bought off-brand batteries before and they've kind of gone kaput after time or if you put them too, through too much extreme cold or too much extreme heat, they wind up dying out. So I definitely would purchase a brand name battery, which comes out to about $60 for the battery that's required for this Olympus camera. So that leaves us with about $50 remaining. Now, what would I do with the last $50 that I have to spend here? Not a lot, but definitely something that I can do with it. So the first thing that I would do with this is buy myself a camera backpack and um, probably the same camera backpack that I started out. Um, actually, it was my second camera backpack that I used in wildlife photography because technically I had a worse one before, went up to this one. This is a nice small, small camera backpack, perfect for people with micro four thirds cameras and not really needing to pack a lot of gear into it. Um, is the Duragadget camo backpack, nice and small, has a camouflage. That way, if you're gonna be wearing, you know, green clothing, camouflage clothing, it's gonna be that much better for blending into the environment. So I would purchase that camera backpack, costs about $30 on Amazon. And so um, that gets me at least the capability to be able to pack my stuff, unpack it, carry snacks, whatever I need for the day with me. So this gets me started again in my wildlife photography journey, gives me that capability that we were talking about before. Now, lastly, we have about $20 left. I would spend my last $20 buying a $12 camo scarf. So I would use this camo scarf to throw over my head. That way, if I'm maybe laying prone on the ground, I can you know scope out the wildlife that I'm shooting at, be able to capture them, things like that. And uh, just for all those different scenarios, just gets me that much closer to birds if I'm shooting birds or other wildlife. And if need be, I have that capability to blend in with my environment. I think this is extra important knowing that I only have an up to 400 millimeter lens. So if I'm ever camped out in areas, I really have to get close to those species that I'm shooting. So a camo scarf is gonna allow me just that a little bit extra, you know, blending in with the environment. That way wildlife will be a little bit less, you know, scared of me, intimidated by me. And even though it's not, you know, a full ghillie suit or maybe, um, you know, a blind or anything like that, at least it'll help a little bit in those types of scenarios. So those would be my picks if I had a $1,000 budget for wildlife photography. Let me know in the comments what you kind of think about those things. If you own a lot of those pieces of gear, let me know your experience with them. Comment with some of the others around here, help them out, <laughs> all that good stuff. And um, I'd just love to see kind of what your guys' thoughts are on this process. If you guys are looking for a $2,000 budget or a $5,000 budget for wildlife photography videos, make sure to drop those in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to film those videos for you guys if that's something you guys are interested in. And until then, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your week, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.